working with the Tata Group, and uh, this is a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. We learn from sources that after Tata Steel, Nasli Vadia has now written to the shareholders of Tata Motors, raising several issues. Rona Joy Banerjee joins in on the telephone line with all that the letter contains. Rona Joy. Well, thanks. Well, yes, I mean, this letter is coming just two days after Nasli Vadia had written a letter to the, uh, you know, to the shareholders ahead of the EGM for Tata Steel. Now he's written for for Tata Motors shareholders. Remember, the EGM for Tata Motors will be taking place on the 22nd of December. And here, you know, you know, you know this is a 12-page note. While the broad template of the letter that he's written to Tata Motors shareholders is pretty much the same as what he wrote, you know, in case of Tata Steel. But there are obviously some specific allegations that have been made with respect to Tata Motors. And I'll quickly take you through some of them. He talks about, you know, of course, Nano, which has been a center of a lot of controversy. Mr. Mistry had also raised this issue. Uh, uh, you know, Mr. Nasliwadi, in a sense, echoing Mr. Vistri's views, saying that Nano should have been discontinued. He himself was against the continuation of the Nano when it was seen that the Nano as a product was not succeeding. And he said that Nano has proved to be a serious drain on the financial resources of Tata Motors. And he says that even at a price point of as high as 2.25 lakh rupees from 1 lakh, as, uh, you, know, you know, which was the launch price, Nano remains, uh, you know, uh, 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 neither saleable nor is it a viable project. He also says that for a company which is so indebted like Tata Motors, it has large cross holdings in various Tata Group companies. And actually, Nasli Wadia quantifies the amount of cross holding Tata Motors has, which he says is to the tune of 8,800 crore rupees. And he actually asks the shareholders whether this 8,800 crore would be better if this money was invested in Tata Motors or actually used to bring down its, some of its debt levels. What, two quick points I'd also like to make here. So for the first time, Nasli Wadia has also drawn attention to a 1998 agreement that was signed between Tata Sons and Tata Motors. As for the 1998 agreement, Tata Motors were to pay royalty payments to Tata Sons for the use of brand Tata. He says for the first 50 years, Tata Motors, you know, at that point it was called Telco, they never had to pay any royalty, you know, for the use of brand name. It's only in 1998 when this agreement was signed and he wants an examination of that 1998 agreement. He also, you know, draws attention of the shareholders to the events that led to the November 14th board meeting of Tata Motors, where independent directors had very vaguely said that they support the decisions of the management, but did not name or did not support Cyrus Mystery openly, like in case of Indian Hotels and Tata Chemicals. He says that that was because before the start of the board meeting, some members of Tata Sands had informed the independent directors of Tata Motors that even if they were to support Cyrus Mystery, they should not make a public disclosure of that support. And hence, maybe, you know, they, you know their response to the stock exchange and later on was more caveated. There are a whole lot of, you know, allegations that Nasli Wadi has made again. But these, for me, are, I think, are the new uh, points that have come, which are different from the ones that he had made in case of Tata Steel.